Now here in these verses, Allah has mentioned very clearly to us by first drawing our attention to the creation of ourselves, the different postures of the human body, the different attitudes of the human psychology. He draws our attention to the heavens, the alternation of the night and the day, the firmament, the stars, the constellations. And then he says to us, he has not created all of this for any foolish purpose. Because when you see the design of it, you know that the design of it is very powerful and very precise. And something very powerful and very precise that is beyond your own calculation and imagination, it cannot be foolish. It cannot be just thrown together. For instance, if you took ten marbles and numbered them one to ten, and all of them were different colors, and you put them inside of a bag and shook the bag, and then closing your eyes reached inside that bag, and I told you, pull out marble number one, and then pull out marble number two, and then pull out marble number three, in order. What's the chance of your pulling out those ten marbles in order? Do you know what the chances are? Twenty-six million to one. So what's the chances of the heavens and the earth being thrown in a big bang and orchestrated like they are? What's the chance of that? My dear respected brothers, we have to ask ourselves a further question. When you see a bridge, a building, or an automobile, you automatically consider the person or the company that constructed it. When you see an airplane, a rocket, a satellite, or a large ship, you also think about how incredible of a vehicle that it is. When you see a nuclear plant, an orbiting space station, a super international airport like what exists here in this country, you have to be thoroughly impressed with the engineering dynamics that are involved. Yet, these are just things that are manufactured by humans, manufactured by human beings. Then what about the human body? With its massive and intricate control systems. Think about it. Think about the brain. How it thinks. How it functions how it analyzes, stores information, retrieves information, distinguishes and categorizes information in a millionth of a second and does it constantly. Think about the brain for a moment. This is the brain that made the automobile, the rocket ships, the boats and so and so. Think about the brain and who made that. Think about the heart, how it pumps continuously for 60 or 70 years intaking and discharging blood throughout the body and maintaining that steady precision throughout the life of that person. Think about it. Think about the kidneys. What kind of function that they carry? The purifying instrument of the body which performs hundreds of chemical analyses simultaneously and also controls the level of toxicity in the content of the body. And it does this automatically. Think about your eyes, the human camera, that adjusts, focuses, interprets, evaluates, applies color automatically, the natural reception and adjustment to light and distance. Automatic. Think about it. Who created that? Who has mastered that? Who plans that? And who regulates that? Human beings themselves? No, of course not. What about this universe? Think about this. This earth is one planet in our solar system. And our solar system is one of the systems in the Milky Way. And the Milky Way is one of the constellations in, this, in that galaxy. And there are millions of galaxies like the Milky Way. Think about that. And they are all in order. They are all precise. They are not 
colliding with each other. They are not conflicting with each other. And they are swimming along in an orbit that has been set for them. Has human beings set that into motion? And are human beings maintaining that precision? No, of course they're not. Think about the ocean, the fish, the insects, the birds, the plants, bacteria, the chemical elements that have not been discovered and cannot be detected even with the most sophisticated instruments. Yet each one of them has a law that they follow. Did all of this synchronization, balance, harmony, variation, design, maintenance, operation, and infinite numeration, did this happen by chance? And also, do these things function perpetually and perfectly also by chance? And do they keep on reproducing themselves and maintaining themselves also by chance? No, of course not. That would be totally illogical and foolish to think. And in the least, it would indicate that however it came to be, it is totally outside of the realm of human capabilities. We will all agree to that. The being, the almighty power, God, the creator who has the knowledge to design, to proportion, who has created all of this and is responsible for maintaining all of this is the only one that is deserving of praise and gratitude. If I gave each one of you a hundred dollars for no reason just for coming here, you would at least say thank you. What about your eyes, your kidneys, your brain, your life, your breath, your children? What about that? Who gave you that? Is he not worthy of praise and thanks? Is he not worthy of your worship and your recognition? My brothers, that in a nutshell is the purpose and the goal of this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to us in the Quran, I have not created the jinn, the spirit, nor the human being for any other purpose except to worship me. This is what the Almighty said. So our purpose in this life is to recognize the Creator, to be grateful to the Creator, to worship the Creator, to surrender ourselves to the Creator, and to obey the laws that He has determined for us. In a nutshell, it means worship. This is our purpose on this life. And whatever we do in the course of that worship, that system, the eating, the drinking, the dressing, the working, the enjoying between the life and the death, all of this is just consequential, but we have been created for worship. That's the purpose of our life. I don't think that anyone who is scientific or analytical, they won't have much argument with that purpose. They may have some other ulterior purpose within themselves, but that's something they have to deal with between themselves and Almighty God. Let's go to the second half of our topic. What do you know about Islam? Not what you heard about Islam, not what you have seen in the action of Muslims, because there's a difference between Islam and Muslims. There's a difference between a man and a father. A man who has children. He is a father, but father is a responsibility. If a man does not fulfill those responsibilities, he is not, natu he is not necessarily a good father. Islam is a rule and an order. If a Muslim does not fulfill these rules and orders, he is not a good Muslim. So you cannot compare Islam by Muslims. We hear the terms Islam and Muslims quite often. And we read about Islam and Muslims in the periodical textbooks of colleges and universities. We hear and we see 
a lot of inaccurate, misleading, and purposeful misinformation through the media. And I have to admit that some of this misinformation and misrepresentation has been perpetuated by Muslims themselves. 